Before Twitter, he worked in Google International HQ, looking after UK, Benelux, and Nordic regions. Before the world of online advertising, Don developed software for a number of startup companies in the United States. Don has a degree in mechanical engineering from CIT, a postgrad in software from UCC, and an MBA from Trinity College Dublin. In Don's spare time, he develops mobile apps with about 4 million downloads on the, on on the Android market. Uh, Don's presentation tonight is how Twitter brings the world closer. Thank you, Don. Thank you very much to the Chamber and to the Marketing Institute for inviting me down to Cork uh, once more. Not sure who the guy on the screen was with the short hair, but um, it was, uh, I guess it's a, a, an older photograph. But uh, th thank you very much um, to everybody for coming out tonight. I know that the roads are going to get a little bit icy tonight and everybody's making a, a big effort to be here. Um, just as an introduction, um, I, I was here last year and I was speaking uh, on behalf of um, of another company uh, last time around. Uh, but what was amazing about that particular event, I, actually, I tried to keep it very broad because people knew a lot about Google, a lot about Google AdWords, and I was speaking very much about the trends in the industry at the time. But after the event, um, I just couldn't believe the amount of people that were on Twitter and talking about Twitter and how much they used it. Um, I myself at the time was on Twitter. I wasn't using it a huge amount. Um, I have to say, but it was just unbelievable the amount of people that were using it. Um, and I think it was after that event that I knew that maybe I was missing a trick, uh, and I started getting into Twitter uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Um, but the, when I was trying to put the content together for tonight, I had a, a quite a, a big challenge actually because I needed to make it uh, relevant and interesting to the majority of people in the audience. Um, however, the I can imagine here in the audience the level of expertise on Twitter is quite varied. So, um, and even just to get a sense uh, of that, um, can maybe the people in, in the audience who, um, who, who use Twitter, uh, maybe once, once a week or more than once a week, uh, ra raise your hand. Um, brilliant. Uh, and what about uh, anybody who uh, either has an account but doesn't really check in or um, doesn't have a, a Twitter account, can they raise their hand as well? Okay, so there's, it's actually about maybe 30% or 40% uh, of the audience are not on Twitter yet, uh, and, and, and the remaining people are. Uh, and I can imagine there's probably people in the audience that are on it, probably even maybe hands up who's on it more than five times a day. Okay, okay, that's probably more than, more than me. So I am going to be a little bit challenged uh, where there's people in the audience that have been using Twitter for, for many years, um, are experts in, in the product. Um, and probably know a lot more about the nuances about, um, about the specifics uh, of, of how to tweet uh, than maybe even I am, but uh, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Um, but actually, first, before I start, because Twitter is real time, um, I am just going to take a photo of, of this and just tweet it out. I'm going to move forward because all of the seats up here are empty. <laughs> okay, that's done. And tweet. Great. Perfect. Thanks very much, guys. Okay, as, as you can see, my name is... Uh, my, my account name is, is at Don O'Leary, so feel free to, to follow or to... Um, uh, actually, as well, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of stats in here. Um, the majority of what you'd see on the slides is okay to tweet. I'd probably be a little bit more liberal with information that's off the slides. Um, what I would say is, uh, on some of that information, if you, if you don't tweet that, uh, that would be great. Um, I just want to give you guys a competitive advantage of knowing that information uh, in Cork and not to, not to give it to everybody else. Okay, just uh, while I get started, this, this presentation tonight is, to, um, is around Twitter bringing you closer, uh, and I'll explain a little bit about, about what that is, uh, but also I wanted to bring you guys a little bit closer to Twitter. Uh, 
as, as we just started in, in, in Ireland. Um, so I'm not sure if that's... No problem. Um, so as you can see flashing behind me, this is, this is the team um, as we stood about maybe four months ago. Uh, so we started in Dublin. Um, we're, we're about a year old when the first person who's actually the financial controller started in Dublin. Um, and then we grew to about seven people in the first few months. Uh, and I joined in July as, as number eight. Uh, at the time, it was, it was, um, I was starting off as a sales team with, with one other person, uh, Stephen McIntyre. Um, and the office, the office really is, um, it's a combination of a number of different functions. The, the majority of it is going to be sales uh, and account management. Uh, but we have a number of different functions in there as well, including finance, marketing, um, we have some engineering, um, we have user, uh, user and spam, um, support. So it really is a, a, a multifunctional organization uh, in, in Dublin, which is fantastic for us. Um, in terms of numbers, we've grown to about 55 uh, already, uh, you know, accelerating from kind of eight people to 55 in the space of six months. And we're probably going to be tripling in size uh, over the next year. So keep an eye out on Twitter. You'll see a lot of uh, job announcements. Um, and and they we're very, very excited uh, to, be, to, to be here and to be growing. One thing as well is there's a very strong Cork connection. Uh, to Twitter. So actually there's a lot of people in the office, even in that first eight people there was a lot of Irish people um, uh, before we started hiring for the multinational teams uh, and there's actually uh, even for those first, first eight or nine either, either half of the people were from Cork or they were married to somebody from Cork. There's a very strong connection and anytime we hire anybody we try and find that Cork connection no matter how far it is. Um, and in actual fact this is our, this is our CEO uh, Dick Costello, uh, who, who actually comes from Cork. Uh, when I met Dick in San Francisco, he, he actually said that nobody can, nobody can pronounce his name, uh, only people from Cork. So in, in the States, he's, he's known as Dick Costello, um, but uh, he, loves, he loves meeting people from Cork. Uh, he actually tweeted this out, and I can see that it was retweeted there by DC, who's, uh, I guess, um, uh, Don Donald, I'm not sure if he's in the audience. Um, so just a bit of background. This is uh, the very first picture of Twitter. This is the, the concept um, that was done by Jack Dorsey. Uh, Jack was the, the, the real instigator behind the product back in 2006. Um, as you can see, it's, it was called, you can see the, the very top, it's uh, my.stat.us, so my status. Um, and here you put in just basically what you're doing. Uh, uh, he, an example was uh, he, he's reading. Um, in some of the other examples there you have uh, in bed, going to the park. Um, and it, it basically it started from there back in 2006. This was their very first uh, Twitter homepage. Um, here you can see that it's, it's uh, not sure if we can work on uh, improving that. Um, but here you can see that it's very, it's actually very text driven. So, so Twitter was started as a, as a, as a mobile um, company. Um, here it's, it's text, what you're doing when you're signing in, you sign in with your mobile number. Um, new to sign up, Twitter works best when you're updated from your mobile phone. Um, to verify who you are, we'll need your phone number. So this is back in 2006, uh, when it was basically built off the mobile phone. If you ever hear any of the large companies, including Facebook and especially Google, uh, they're now turning to be what's called a, a mobile first company um, because mobile traffic is getting um, so large they have to these companies have to be successful on mobile if they're going to be successful long term uh, Twitter was was basically a mobile uh, a mobile platform from the very start um, so this is this is the, the home page that you would see right now uh, for some people it, it's quite familiar you see a lot of this every day for those who are not so familiar, what you see is three, uh, actually four main components. Uh, the very top left is uh, just who you are, the number of tweets that you've done, uh, the number of people that are following you or the number of people that you're following. This is the main section in, this, in the center, this is the timeline. Um, this is where you, all of the people that you're following, you will, you will receive their updates. Uh, on the left hand side you have some suggestions of, of other interesting people to follow uh, and then some of the, 
some of the trends that are happening worldwide. And these are the conversations that people are talking about uh, across the world. You can configure these actually to, to uh, specific areas as well, so uh, places like, you know, by, by country or by location. And, and more importantly, this is what it looks like on the mobile phone. So um, when, when companies say that they're mobile first, even in Google, um, I, sometimes it's, you don't really see it. You still see the products coming out on desktop first. In Twitter, it's completely different. If a product manager is drawing up mocks, you, you know, UI drawings of what products are going to look like, uh, and they're sharing it out to the company, it's done on the mobile phone. So the mobile uh, UIs are done first. Uh, and they develop it for the mobile first, and then it's the desktop afterwards. So even the changes that you would have seen on the, on the, on the home screen in, in the last couple of months, uh, you can't actually see it there on my profile page, but they're actually changed so that it looks better on mobile compared to desktop. So it really is a mobile first company, which is very exciting. Now, should, should you be on Twitter? So you're sitting here, um, maybe 30, 40% of you are saying, yeah, I'm not really on Twitter, should I be? Is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> not sure if you guys are aware, but even the Pope joined Twitter back in December. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. He's got about 1.5 million followers, uh, up from 1.3. But uh, very exciting for, for, for all of us. Um, uh, and the question is, yes, you should really be on Twitter. And the reason that you need to be on Twitter it is because that's where your customers are. So you need to follow, you need to be where your customers are. Twitter is growing extremely rapidly at the moment. We're really hitting an inflection point uh, on the platform. So it started in 2006. The growth has been slow but steady um, up, up to last year. So we've just updated our stats, but in March of last year, we had 140 million active users, monthly actives. That's already up to 200 million, and it's starting. It's accelerating all the time. So it's very, very exciting. Um, it takes uh, three days for to generate one billion tweets. So one one billion tweets are generated every three days. It took us over three years to reach our first billion tweets. So now we do it every three days. Um, that's the number of tweets that are um, generated. The number that actually are received by other people because of the number of followers that you have is in the in the range of about. 59 to 60 billion every three days. So it's a huge, huge amount of content being generated, but a huge amount of it being consumed. About 60% of the people uh, that are on Twitter just consume information, um, and about 40% consume and submit information. Um, so anybody that's starting to look at uh, starting off with Twitter, uh, you don't, don't get onto Twitter just to create content. Get onto Twitter to listen in, see what your customers are doing, see what your friends are doing, see what interesting people uh, around the world are doing. Um, you don't have to tweet anything. You, you, uh, you start off by just, just listening. Again, here's the mobile stats. Um, this is a UK stat that of all of the active users in the UK, 80% of them are, act, are, are, are accessing Twitter over the mobile phone. Okay, so Twitter. Twitter is the shortest distance between you and what interests you most. Okay, so if you think of the difference between Facebook and Twitter, um, Facebook really is a social network where Twitter is an information network. Okay, so the reason that you would go to Twitter, uh, to Facebook is different to, to Twitter. You go to Facebook to, to check in on your friends, to see what, to see what uh, a lot of you, the community that you know um, are doing, uh, and it's quite, quite a closed network. With Twitter, it's very open. You're there for a completely different reason. You're there to consume new information. A lot of people use it to, uh, as, as, as John said, as their, as their news feed when they wake up in the morning. Um, it's there to gain access to, you know, maybe celebrities or sports stars that they're, that they're interested in. But um, it's, it's really to get you closer to the content that you're interested in, which is a very powerful tool. Um, so the terminology that we'll use here, and I'll go into the terminology a little bit uh, more in detail, it's the, the at symbol is you, and the hashtag is really what you're interested in. They're the topics. Okay, so Twitter brings you closer to incredible stories. So um, I presume everybody uh, was, was either watching live or saw it afterwards, the, uh, the, 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 the Austrian 
lunatic base jumper who jumped out of the uh, uh, out of the, the, the balloon. Um, uh, this is more. This is more, an, uh, I guess, an online story. But uh, Evan Davis tweeted, "If that moment uh, when he jumps is not one of the best pieces of TV ever, uh, I don't know what is." Oh wait, one sec. I didn't watch it on TV. So this was happening online. It was real time. It was covered by YouTube. It was Twitter. Um, it, was, it, was, it was pretty uh, an amazing moment for, for online in general. Um, Twitter brings it closer to what you care about. Okay, so this is, this is a picture of the uh, Indy 500 or one of the, the, the this, uh, motor, motocross races in the US where this famous driver was, was in his car and he took this photograph uh, and the photograph is uh, fire, uh, my view. So this is, um, you know, generated a huge amount of buzz on Twitter. Uh, so this is one of, one of the stars of the, of, the, of the sport tweeting out from his car. People tweeting back going, like, are you serious? You're, you're tweeting and driving at the same time. Um, but it was actually, everybody was stopped. He was tweeting a, a crash. This was his view. Um, and what actually happened during that time, uh, and I'll talk about the link with TV in a little bit more detail further on. Uh, what happened during that time, when, when there's a, when there's a, a race uh, and when there's a crash, actually the viewing in TV goes down. When this happened and the tweet went out, it got so much traction so fast, it actually brought people back onto the TV uh, and actually continued watching during, during the crash and during the cleanup. Um, so it was a pretty pheno amazing phenomenon of actually dri driving people from online back onto TV. Um, and just an example of, of the real-time nature uh, of, of Twitter um, and how companies need to be all over uh, opportunities on Twitter. This was, uh, this was an example of uh, one company called Tide who was uh, part of the, the cleanup process in the, in the actual race. Um, and here you can see over on the left-hand side, uh, Tide actually took a snapshot of the cleaning crew using Tide to clean up after the race. And the following day, uh, they, they tweeted out saying, let's hear your best caption for this picture. Uh, we'll, we'll pin our favorite. Uh, that got a huge amount of engagement for, for Tide. And um, basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a brand jumping on a conversation that's happening on Twitter. Uh, to use it to their best, uh, best of their ability. Twitter brings you closer to people. The access you can get to individuals, to, to you know, uh, entertainers, to stars, it's, it, it's amazing. Um, this is an example of uh, Kevin Durant, who is a big um, uh, the NBA player, the National Basketball Association in the US uh, for, for the Oakland. Um, He's, he's at home, he tweets out, um, this lockout is really boring, uh, anybody playing flag football in Oakland, I need to run around or do something. So this is a, a you know, big celebrity, just tweets out, anybody want a game of football? This guy comes on and says, just replies to him, and says, we got a game tonight in Stillwater. Um, and then Kevin goes, can I play? <laughs> and George goes, only if you bring your A game. Obviously still thinking that this guy is not going to be coming to Stillwater to play with us. And he goes, Yes, for real, please come up early, hang out, and go over uh, for some plays with us. So this was the conversation afterwards. Um, I one of the best nights of my life tonight. Uh, Game ball goes to uh, Kevin Durant, and then Kevin responds saying, I had so much fun in Oakland playing flag football. Shout out to my new buddy, Grosvenor Bay. So it's, it's just amazing the access that you can get to people. Uh, Twitter brings you closer to the brands that you love. This is an example of uh, just this guy called uh, uh, Peter Shankman. Um, he's, out, he's flying into one of the airports in the US, and he goes, Morton's is a steak restaurant. Um, I guess in the airport, and he goes, can you meet me at Newark Airport with a porter house uh, when I land in two hours? <laughs> Didn't really expect to get a response. And then he goes, oh my God, I don't believe it. Morton just showed up with a porter house steak. <laughs> now what, what you're seeing here, uh, and it's, it's something that I was even talking to some of the guys earlier on, this is, this is, this is all PR activity. Um, that's all for free on the platform. So if you do something innovative, if it's picked up, uh, by the right sources. It's amazing the amount of actual um, coverage that you can get for something like this. Uh, 
and then uh, Twitter brings it closer to your customers. Uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight one of the test cases, that, the case studies that we're having great success with at the moment. Uh, Halo, uh, this is a company where uh, it's an app on your phone and it knows your location and you just ask for a taxi to pick you up where you are at the moment. Um, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing app. It's, it's launched in Dublin about six months ago uh, and uh, it, it's doing extremely well. They were one of our first Irish customers. And even though they launched in London, uh, then in Dublin, and they're looking to launch in New York as a service, uh, they started their Twitter activity with us in Dublin. And uh, because of the success that, that they're having, uh, they're now rolling that out in London and, and, and New York as well. Uh, but just to give you uh, some taste of the, the type of content that they're creating, here it's um, wet, stuck for a dart, grab a hail cab home. Uh, and then there's a link to their, their, their actual app. Um, they're, but they're really using this, this uh, real-time nature of the platform. The Dublin Web Summit was on uh, a couple of months ago. It was, it was lashing rain outside. Uh, they were able to target the specific tech community uh, in, in, in Ireland. And they were able to say, you know, if, if you're, you know, are you stuck in the rain, uh, going to the Web Summit, grab a, grab a cab. Uh, so it's, 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 it's amazing some of the work that these guys are doing. Now, Twitter brings it closer to the customers whether you like it or not. Okay, um, so a lot of customers, a lot of uh, people are using Twitter as a customer service tool. Um, you might say that that's not great because it's public. You don't really want to, you know, air your dirty laundry in, in, in public. Um, but one of the, so, so I'll just give you an example of how some companies are using their customer service line. So, excuse my language. Um, this guy tuned, he says, oh, two bastard big man thing, I swear, direct me to your owner. What happened to my internet connection? Uh, fan man's having to use Wi-Fi and that, right? So uh, O2 looked at the tweet. They looked at the profile of the guy, and they actually, this guy doesn't normally tweet like this. Um, but they came back with this. Um, Have you tried to reset the router thing fam so man's can use the Wi-Fi and that, right? <laughs> so, so this is a reply to somebody on Twitter. Um, <laughs> Look at the number of retweets, 5,147 uh, retweets of a reply, um, 1,989 favourites. So this was, this was an outage that O2 had. We ran sentiment analysis on Twitter um, during this outage. It was net positive for O2 during an outage. So it, it's incredible. Um, I've seen... Uh, Three examples already um, with advertisers that we have in Dublin where people are complaining about their products um, and our advertisers are replying to them uh, and uh, the next tweet is actually a positive tweet back to the company endorsing their product publicly. So it's pretty amazing. Now, what, what some companies are doing, um, O2 are not doing it here, but uh, some companies are actually moving a customer service away from their main Twitter handle to a different Twitter handle um, because they don't want to be spamming a lot, of, uh, a lot of their customers with just customer messages uh, or customer responses. So that's kind of a, a strategy that you can take as well. Okay, Twitter brings it closer to key events. Uh, one particular stat that we measure very much in Twitter is the number of tweet, peak tweets per second. So if you have an event, what's the peak tweets per second that we're getting? Um, as you can see, everything here from the Royal Wedding, the Champions League, um, the Super Bowl, uh, the, the highest one uh, in, in 2012 was the, uh, the, the Euro 2012 final. Uh, but you can see it, that it's actually growing all the time, which is pretty amazing. And uh, Twitter gets you closer to, to TV. So 60% uh, of UK Twitter users actually uh, use Twitter, either reading or tweeting while they're watching television. Okay, so I wanted to change tack a little bit. Uh, so that was all very high level. You know, okay, Twitter is good. There's a lot of people on it. Um, if I'm not on it, maybe I'm missing a trick. Uh, so that's, that's fine. But what, what do I do about it? So one thing that, uh, and this, the, the next part of the, the, the presentation will get a little bit detailed. Um, but one thing that our advertisers in, 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 in Dublin uh, in, and, and EMEA really want is like, what are the best practices? So I'm not going to go through the promoted products. I'm not going to go through the, the ad products to you guys. I'm going to go through what are the best practices from an organic point of view 
that's going to cost you nothing to get a better presence on Twitter and how to use it effectively. Okay, so we're just going to go through a number of things. Uh, and this is kind of a little, a little kind of mini workshop. Um, and what I'll do actually in, on these best practices is I'll send them out to, uh, to John in the chamber, to, um, to the marketing institute, and you guys uh, hopefully will, will get it out to everybody. Um, because what we've seen is um, on the paid products, uh, on, on where, where we make money on the advertising side, uh, the best advertisers are the best organic users. So you have to be really good on the platform first before you're going to be able to go, be, be, be good with the advertising. The advertising really is only amplifying your voice, amplifying the work on Twitter. So first off, uh, the basics. Um, so we have the, the ad username. I told you it was going to get a little bit basic, uh, but hopefully you get everybody up to the same level. Uh, so this is your account, your account profile name. So you've got your timeline, you follow people, you listen into what they're tweeting, um, you've got followers yourself who want to listen into what you're tweeting if you, if, if you do want to tweet. Um, you've got the hashtag, which is the pound symbol, what we have tonight, which is just a way of organizing uh, conversations. So it's an easy way for us to, um, to keep track of, of how I'm doing tonight as a speaker. Um, or you know, just to see what's going on. Um, and then we have the, the, well, the Tico link. This is where we actually shorten all, all, of the, all of the URLs that you would use in a tweet down to actually nine characters. Um, uh, but you don't have to worry a huge amount about that. The basic ter terminology of Twitter is a retweet. This is where if I tweet something out, and one of, one of my followers who, who uh, sees that in their timeline can just send on the message. They can retweet it. Um, so this, this is the key part of the, the virality of, of Twitter. Um, anybody can be following me, so anybody can retweet the messages that, uh, that I'm sending out. Um, a reply, uh, again, we just saw the public reply from O2. Uh, a favorite, this is kind of, it's uh, to mark a tweet as a special or preferred. It's not really an endorsement of the message. It's just saying, um, this is, this is an interesting tweet. I find it interesting whether I agree with the tweet or, or not. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, a mention is when, you're, when you send out a tweet and you put their ad handle in the, in the tweet. That's going to that's gonna show up on uh, that person's uh, Twitter account so they, 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 they know to look at it. Um, a direct message, you can actually do private messaging uh, to each other on Twitter. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to find in the, uh, in the product. I find, um, but, but it is there, we can use it as a direct messaging platform. Uh, and then just engagement, that's the number, of, uh, the number of clicks or retweets or favorites that you would get on a particular tweet. So just getting to know the tweet itself. Um, I think this sums up the 140 character. It's, it's a very short tweet. Um, uh, this is a quote from Mark Twain. Uh, I, didn't have to write, I didn't have time to write a shorter letter so I wrote a long one instead. So when, when, when you're writing a tweet, one of the big challenges is to get to say what you, say what you mean uh, in 140 characters. The reason it's 140 characters is because it was based on the original mobile platform um, uh, with the 160 character limit on the text. Uh, so we cut it down to 140 so you had room for the, the actual account name as well. Um, but it's actually very difficult to say what you mean in 140 characters. And it takes a lot longer to compose your tweets um, than uh, if you had unlimited space. But the advantage of that is you say what you mean, you mean what you say, uh, and when you're consuming on your timeline, you can actually consume a lot more information succinctly using that 140 characters. So this is the, the basic component of a, of a tweet. Um, so let me just pull out the important parts. Uh, I think we spoke about everything here. You've got your profile picture, um, your, 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 your username, the, the app mention. I don't, know if I, ha I don't have a pointer. Um, no, I'm not tall enough, obviously. Um, and then the, 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 the hashtag that gets attention. The hashtag is an interesting one because it does organize conversations. That, that comes up as a link. So if you click on that hashtag, it actually searches for all of the conversations with the hashtag gets attention in there. Um, but it's also a way of you actually cutting down the number of characters that you have to use. Um, so it's a way of you actually getting a kind of your your main point across in the tweet. Uh, then down at the bottom is just all of the different engagements that you, that you have. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit more detail the best practices on, on a DR campaign, a direct response tweet. 
where you're trying to get actual traffic to your website. Okay, just getting a uh, getting started, so log on to twitter.com, get a username that's associated with you or your brand, it's an extension of your brand. Um, if, if you're setting your company up on Twitter, it may be, you may be better off just setting up your own personal account first, get into Twitter, follow a bunch of different people, see what's happening, um, and use out the platform as yourself. Um, and then once you get more familiar with the platform, then you can start uh, creating the, the, the profile for your company then as well. I think it's a good idea to keep them separate as well. Um, uh, I was, uh, if, if you feel the, the challenge on Twitter is to create and find a voice for your brand um, and you may have a number of people in your company actually tweeting with that one voice um, and it's useful as well to have your own, your own personal Twitter profile as well uh, where you're kind of stating that these are the views of myself not my company and it, leads, it allows you actually for people even to see a kind of behind the scenes with your company who, who are the people behind your company. Um, integrate Twitter, the, the Twitter username across as, as much of your collateral as possible. Um, if you're doing TV ads, put it down the bottom, um, it drives a lot more engagement. Use hashtags in your ads if you're using TV ads. Uh, on any of your uniforms, your packaging, uh, anything that you're showing to your customers, even the, 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 um, uh, if you have mobile apps or if you're doing events, just make sure that you're using your the, 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 at, the at symbol or your, your account name for Twitter uh, across, all of your, across all of your assets. Um, when you're creating your Twitter profile, there's a couple of key ones to look at here. Um, so obviously you just upload a profile picture. In this case, it's the red uh, logo for Vodafone UK. Um, the second one is, is create a bio to tell people you know, who you are uh, and what you're all about. Uh, the third one is to personalize the background that's gonna be in, in tune with your brand and your company. Uh, I, I picked Vodafone here as a specific example because uh, it's, that background is just an image, but you can see what they've done. They've actually created uh, photographs of all of their service agents and put them up on the left hand side. Uh, and they've given everybody's name and then they've actually done a little um, LS or MD uh, uh, next to their name. So when they're actually tweeting, you can see that this is uh, PE who is, um, I don't know which one of them on the, on the left hand side, but you can actually see which person is actually tweeting to you. Um, so I think that's, a lot of companies use that. They can put in their, um, maybe their website address or um, they just make, make, use, um, make use of that space. Um, and uh, obviously on the fourth one is, is your timeline. Um, and it's really just, you know, keep, keep, your, keep your tweets fresh. Keep them informative. A good rule of thumb, uh, when you're tweeting, uh, obviously it's a, it's a fully open platform, it's fully public, so um, uh, anybody can retweet your content. But uh, think, of, think of content that you actually want people to retweet. So when you're tweeting something, think, is this interesting for somebody if it's going to come up in their timeline? Is it interesting enough for them to, repeat, to, to retweet onto all of their followers? You know, so I think Twitter maybe got a, has got a little bit of a bad name uh, in the early days where people were just tweeting saying, I'm getting up in the morning or I'm going to bed or... Um, you know, so you just make, make sure that, you know, the tweets that you're tweeting out, like, are they going to be interesting for people to, to, to read? Okay, make sure that you understand your audience that you're tweeting to. Um, this is, there's, there's a lot of different conversations going on Twitter. Um, this is, this is just uh, the different types of conversations globally broken down by vertical. Um, the, the interesting thing here is, I know entertainment is up the very top. Um, but there's a misconception with Twitter that it's only entertainment, it's, it's only um, Lady Gaga or uh, Justin Bieber. Uh, there's a lot of different conversations uh, coming up. So a lot, of, a lot of information about, a lot of conversations around tech, CPG, travel, um, telco, retail, uh, politics. There's a lot of different conversations going on. Um, but there are conversations that you can listen into. So you can, you can actually hear what's being said about the specific industry that you're in. You can listen to maybe what your competitors are doing or listen to even the responses that your competitors are getting uh, about their products. <coughs> maybe uh, seeing opportunities for you to be able to jump in in conversations or just to, to learn more uh, about, uh, about your industry. Uh, this is probably the, the, uh, one of the most important aspects as you're setting up on Twitter is, is you, need to, you need to have a purpose when you're setting, when you're setting up your, your Twitter account. What does your, you need to try and find your voice and what does it stand for? You know, are you, are you, uh, are you getting on Twitter to, to entertain people? Are you getting on there to do customer service? 
maybe you're trying to generate leads to your website, which is uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the companies that I deal with is, is a lot of, about lead generation and traffic to their website. Um, so have just be be very clear about what you'd like to do uh, when when you get onto Twitter. Um, be, be human, responsive, and flexible. So this is Twitter is all about getting you know getting closer to your customers and they getting close to you. If you met them in the street or if you met them in this room, you'd speak with a certain voice. Use that voice uh, when you're on Twitter, um, and you can you can vary it to, to whoever you're talking to. Um, also, it's very real time. So if you are going to if you are going to be doing customer service on Twitter, make sure you're responsive because people. It is a real-time platform. I think people do expect to get responses when they do uh, send you something on Twitter. Um, there's no point in responding a few days later uh, when you're, you're really kind of losing the moment, uh, and Twitter really is all about the moment. Um, and then be flexible again, depending on who you're talking to. Uh, for, for our advertisers, um, it's all about the content. As I said, content is king. Uh, it, it, the content has to be interesting. Um, and it's good to know like why why people are actually on Twitter. Um, so uh, the top one really is for discounts and promotions. Discounts, promotions, competitions. They're following you on Twitter um, to maybe get a, an inside track on uh, maybe a deal that you have coming down. So think about maybe even exclusive deals that you would launch through Twitter uh, before launching on your website, for example. Um, again, free stuff. Fun and entertainment. Twitter is fun. It's it's all about fun. People enjoy going onto Twitter, um, and then updates about coming sales, access to exclusive content again, um, and then down to down to customer service. So this is this is a slide that we show. Uh, it's in every every um, presentation that we would do to advertisers. We would show them this content. Um, even even though Twitter is real time. Have a think about how you can schedule your week. So you don't want Twitter to be, you know, you wake up on Tuesday morning saying, okay, I, I need to tweet something I haven't tweeted in, in like a day or two days. Like, what am I going to tweet about now? Um, actually set up a, a, an actual weekly calendar, a Twitter calendar. Um, so you do one type of content on a Monday, you do a different type of content on a Tuesday. Um, the examples here um, are special promotions on, on, on Monday for this barista bar. Uh, one of our most successful advertisers actually has a, a, sh it's, a, it's, a it's a company called Drop Wines. They sell uh, it's like daily deals for wines, um, and they have a Champagne Tuesday, where they do special offers for champagne. Um, but have have a think about your calendar. Uh, people love getting an insight into the company. They love getting a kind of a, a, a backdoor view of what's happening behind the scenes, um, and then. Uh, you know, you can come up with a very creative content uh, with a calendar, uh, but uh, so you don't have to be thinking every day, what am, what am I going to tweet today? Um, also, as well, uh, have a think about, uh, I don't know, have a think about the unexpected occasions where there's going to be a lot of traffic on Twitter. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe your audience is, is maybe it's a sports audience, uh, say like a like a sports shop in in, in Cork and. Um, uh, you know, you're going to be, there's going to be a lot of people watching a match at the weekend. Um, have your tweets ready for what way the match is going to go. And just be able to jump on conversations. It looks like it's very spontaneous, but have a plan. Because in, in a lot of those cases, it's either going to go one way or the other. Again, this is surrounding, surrounding your content around the actual occasions. So the sporting events, as I said, uh, entertainment, holidays, seasonal, Valentine's Day coming up, St. Patrick's Day. There's going to be a lot of conversations happening around these events, um, and fantastic for you guys to just jump, jump on those conversations. Uh, jump on the conversations, but also make the conversations um, applicable to the people, to your followers, um, uh, as well. This is, again, using the hashtags to organize your, your conversation on Twitter. A lot of our bigger brands would use hashtags um, in, in, in a lot of their advertising content. For the smaller brands, it can get expensive because if you don't have that reach in your, in your advertising campaign, your hashtag might, may get lost. Uh, in those cases, you're probably better off actually using your, your ad handle. Um, we, we had a, the, the product is changing all the time, so always keep an eye on what's, what's new. Uh, one, of the, one of the newest 
uh, things that we have is called uh, Twitter, Twitter cards, or expandable tweets. This is where um, you can see in the middle part here, uh, you're, uh, this uh, Rosetta Stone are linking back to their website, um, but it's actually pulling a, a section of the, of the story into the tweet itself. So you're in Twitter, you can expand the tweet and you'll actually get a synopsis of the story and a photograph to go with that story. Um, same with, with uh, video content. So the, you know, the person who uh, is looking at your tweet, they don't have to go to your website to get the full story. Um, you can get them actually a little, tweet, uh, a little teaser in, in, the, uh, in the expandable media cards in, in their timeline itself. It's very, very useful media. Um, the photographs, uh, a tweet with a photograph, um, here it says tweets with an image get, gets twice the engagement um, of tweets without image links. Uh, that's actually much higher. It can go as three, three to four times um, more engagement with, with photographs. A lot of you guys would be saying, well, that's fantastic. We've, we've got loads of followers on Twitter. Um, everything is great. We're, we're, we're tweeting content. But, but look, I'm, I'm selling product. I need to get people to my website. Like what's the best type of content, or how do I formulate that tweet to drive people to, to my website? So I just wanted to go through a few best practices for you guys. Um, and again, these will be in the, the content that I'll send out to you guys. Um, so this is the anatomy of a, of a direct response tweet. Um, so first off, a, a direct response tweet contains no hashtags, no at mentions, and no rich media. Okay, so it's, it may look like a kind of a little bit of a boring tweet. Um, however, you're not directing people away from anything else except that link at the very end or wherever you're putting it. Um, so there's no place else for them to click uh, on your actual uh, tweet that's going to bring them elsewhere other than your actual website. Um, very good call to action. So in this case, it's test drive, uh, test, test drive degrees. So there has to be an actual call to action in the tweet. Um, Again, if you saw on the other slide, like what's interesting to people on Twitter, uh, free stuff is very interesting, uh, promotions, discounts. Uh, so here, this is um, test drive or degrees with a free online design. So you know, the person sees that, okay, this is some exclusive content that I'm going to get. Um, and also harness the real, the, the real time power of Twitter. At the very end here, it's space is limited. So this is kind of a, like a one-time deal, get it now. Um, so these types of tweets actually drive a huge amount of engagement uh, and, and traffic to, to your website. There's no point in g getting a huge amount of traffic to your website if you can't actually convert those leads into sales. Uh, this is if we're working for Twitter or working for Google. It, does, it doesn't matter. Like, wherever you're spending advertising dollars, it's wasted money if you're not converting those leads once they get to your website. So make sure that you're that your, your, your website landing page is very simple, that, there is, that it's, it's relevant to where they came from. If there's any surprises, um, and if it's not synced up, then it's, it's not going to be a great experience. Create specific landing pages for Twitter. Create specific landing, landing pages for Google AdWords and Facebook, but make sure that it's specific. Um, it needs to be engaging. Um, you, need to, you need to move people through that conversion funnel as fast as, uh, as, fast as po possible. Um, it should be quick. It should be uh, as a very short conversion cycle from, from Twitter. People are used to that succinctness of the 140 characters. Um, but even more importantly, a lot of the traffic that you'll get from Twitter is going to be from a mobile device. Um, make sure that your conversion funnel works on mobile. Whether that's either a, if, if you've got 10 fields to fill out in your conversion funnel, it's fine on a desktop, the person might spend time. They may not spend that time with, with 10 steps in a, on a mobile device. They may not have the information that they need with them uh, if they're out and about, for example. I don't know if you're, if you're a company that's looking to kind of switch electricity, for example, you don't, you're not going to have your bills with you while you're on the, the train going to work. Um, so have, have a think about the landing pages for mobile. In that case, it might be a different conversion uh, funnel that you're looking at. Maybe you just want to get an email or a phone number from somebody that you can actually go back and contact them later on. Um, yeah, we spoke about the short lead forms. Um, also, this is, I guess, even further integration with Twitter as well is the, on, on the developer side. So we have a, 
we have a, uh, a piece of code on Twitter that allows you to connect either your website uh, into Twitter or even applications, software that you're building yourself as a company onto Twitter. Um, you can get quite rich information from Twitter, from that it's called an API. Um, you can get rich information about the, the, the stream, the Twitter stream from that, and you can actually build very innovative solutions on top of that. I'll just give you an example of one at the moment. Um, this is from uh, Zartus, a Cork company. I don't know if John, John Dennehy is in the, in the room. He didn't make it tonight. Um, so John Dennehy has actually just launched this uh, last night. This is uh, uh, this part of his website. He created a website called Make It in Ireland. It's to promote uh, IT jobs in Ireland. Um, and he's got a number of the large companies like Twitter and Google and Facebook um, uh, on board as well. This is his idea of, um, I think he's calling it Twitter Island. Um, and what it is, it's all of the streams, uh, all of the Twitter stream on the left hand side of all of the tweets that have to do, that are generated from Ireland, um, that are talking about jobs in Ireland. Um, and wherever there's a tweet on the left hand side, you'll see on the right hand side an animation of where the tweet is coming from. So you can see a lot of people tweeting from Dublin or Cork or Limerick. Um, and it's, it's a pretty uh, innovative solution. Uh, and it's a very nice way to actually visualize uh, the number of jobs that are coming through. I'm going to do two slides and promote the products. Uh, I'm not going to sell it to you, but you're probably sitting down there saying, oh, bloody hell, like, this, all this stuff is free. How, how are they going to make money uh, on the back of Twitter? So what I said I'd do is just give you just a two-slider, just for your own, your, your own information. Um, as I said, here on the left-hand side, uh, you've got your ad handle, you want to you wanna establish your presence on Twitter, you're using organic tweets, you get your, you're getting followers, um, people are retweeting your content, you're getting reach, hopefully some of the stuff that you're doing is getting viral, going viral, um, being picked up by other media uh, outlets. Um, but what, what we have then is we actually have a, a, a suite of advertising products that actually help you amplify that message even more. So rather than it showing up uh, just on your followers' streams, you can actually target different industries. Um, so your tweet will actually, uh, we have 350 different categories of interests that you can target. You can target by geolocation, by device. So you can target, you know, the snowboarders in uh, Austria. Um, uh, and you, the tweet that you're sending out will actually show up on their, on their timeline. And it shows up something like this. Um, so if, if you look up in the very top right hand side, uh, here you see uh, a tweet from Warrior Football, um, and it's basically the exact same as the tweet. Uh, it's the exact same as their organic content, but you see the little yellow symbol saying promoted by Warrior Football. So if you click on that tweet, um, it's uh, a click on a link or retweet or favorite, or if you have some action with that tweet, it's going to cost uh, uh, Warrior uh, money, and that, that money goes to Twitter. So that's basically how the majority of our revenue is made. Um, the reason that we're very excited about this product is there is huge, there's huge engagement rates with these tweets. So if you look at the standard display um, uh, advertisement, it gets like either on Facebook or uh, banner ads and websites, the engagement rate is in the region of 0.05% um, engagement rate. Um, with, with these products, we're getting engagements of between 1% and 3%. So every time, for, for every hundred uh, times that tweet is seen, it's clicked on three times. We're getting engagement rates as high as 10% on some of the, on, on some of our advertisers' content. Um, the reason that we're really, I know that the, the advertisers pay for those engagements. Um, the reason that it's so exciting is because it shows the relevance to the user. So this content is really, really relevant to the person who's looking at the screen. Um, and it's relevant because hopefully we're, our, our targeting is right. You know, there's a reason that it's showing up in your stream. Um, that there's a reason uh, that you should be seeing that content. We have another couple of products as well over on the, the left hand side, the, the Who to Follow. Um, we can actually promote accounts on the left hand side as well. Um, and then on the bottom left is the promoted trends. So um, the, the trends are the, the most popular conversations that are happening in a particular location, but you can actually buy for, for 24 hours, you can buy the, the, the top slot, uh, the top conversation you can create a conversation uh, on Twitter for a day. Um, so that's, I said I'd just show you guys how, how we're making money and that's how we're hopefully going to, um, to, to go forward with it. 
Um, I just, maybe just a note on that. We have the, the majority of the people that we're going to be hiring in Dublin, just for your own information, is going to be dealing with um, medium to large advertisers specifically on these products. Um, there is going, and we have a dedicated account management team that, that work with the advertisers to create that, you know, that content and to make sure that they're getting the best return on investment for, for their spend. Um, for the, for, the, for the SMB market, we're going to be coming out with a self-serve product. Uh, and that's, I was hoping it was going to be launched at this stage. It's, it's, it's probably going to be uh, maybe one to two quarters away where uh, uh, anybody can actually go in and use a self-serve model to, to, uh, to amplify the work that you're doing. So if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're on Twitter and you're maybe thinking of using these products, make sure that you get good at your organic activity first. Uh, there's no point in promoting bad content. So get good, get good content, get good engagement, um, and then you can work on amplifying that great work that you've done. Okay, so Twitter and TV. So this is a very new area for us, um, and because it's TV, there's gonna be a little bit of a, a visual content. Um, here are some UK stats. We have uh, 10 million uh, UK av active advertisers. Um, as I said before, 60% of them uh, use Twitter, either uh, tweeting or reading tweets uh, while they're on the TV. Um, and uh, at peak time, at peak times, a lot, of, a lot of that traffic is actually talking about the content that's on Twitter. So it's a very important um, uh, partner for us. We use the hashtags as kind of like a kind of a campfire. Um, it's a way to kind of... Uh, focus the conversation on Twitter around a particular topic or area. Advertisers use these hashtags quite a bit um, to, to really kind of to, to drive the conversation around their brands. I'll just give you an example of uh, a few of them. Their hashtag for their TV ad was uh, so long vampires. Um, and then some of the analysis that we'd be doing in the back end is we'd be looking at the traffic of, so that the red line is the uh, conversations around so long vampires. Um, and the, the left hand side is here is the cumulative tweets in uh, thousands. So it peaked uh, at 35,000 um, uh, tweets. Um, but you can see the blue line is uh, Audi. So Audi, the hashtag Audi or Audi wasn't there from in the ad from a Twitter point of view. Um, but people started talking about So Long Vampires, but they also started talking about Audi uh, on Twitter as well. Um, so that's just a kind of a nice example of, of using hashtags. Again, um, you might have seen in one of the previous slides, one of the biggest uh, generators of tweets from TV point of view is, is the, the X Factor. of all of the judges there's always Thank an you. issue why not change it up for him i just feel but i feel i even feel bad having to say the same thing to you each week i don't think it's fair you do the same thing over and over again with him it's not working so lisa i don't know what's offended me more what you've said or the fag ash breath <laughs> <laughs> okay so nearly six hundred thousand tweets 80 percent almost from mobile um 91 share of time uh, so it's pretty, pretty amazing to see the actual peaks, the real-time peaks, uh, with relating to, to Twitter. Um, the, this, is, this is going back a little bit. This is going back to the actual campaign, uh, the presidential campaign in the US. I won't go through all of this video, but it was just interesting to see how people are using, again, building on top of those APIs that I talked, talked about, building innovative solutions to really get a, an understanding of what's, what's going on real-time in the world. You at home can participate through Twitter tonight. You can weigh in on how well the candidates are answering the questions. Tweet the candidate's last name and hashtag answer if you think he's tackling the question, or hashtag dodge if you think he's avoiding the question. But we're going to take a break right here. Remember to send your thoughts on how the candidates are answering the questions via Twitter. Uh, tweet the candidate's last name and hashtag answer or hashtag dodge. Send me questions at, at Brett Bear. Include that hashtag SC debate. I don't know if your Twitter page is like mine. Mine is on fire. What have they, what's kind of been the consensus for the first hour of the debate? 
Let's take a look at this because this is very interesting. We've got the green line here for Newt Gingrich, a white line for Rick Santorum, and an orange line for Mitt Romney. Let's drill down on this and take a look at Mitt Romney, where the biggest dodges were perceived to be. First of all, his uh, answer and his back and forth with Rick Santorum on this issue of felons and whether or not they should be allowed to vote. People thought that he was dodging that, and look at the numbers here. And then on his tax records, he was seen as dodging that question so much that we couldn't actually record the number of people who were saying that he was dodging. Okay, so, so you get the message. Um, I think TV is going to be a very important partner for us as we move forward. Um, I just wanted to give you kind of a flavor of how we're, of, of how we're using it. Um, this, this next video uh, just runs through, I guess, some of the most successful TV ad campaigns that we've done in 2012. Uh, one of my favorite ones that you're gonna see, so look out for it again. Um, I think it's, it's a Mercedes ad, and it's called uh, You Drive. So this was uh, two ads that they did on a Friday and a Saturday night, I think, uh, for the X Factor. Um, so during the, uh, on the first night, they basically, uh, sh they, they basically uh, told the audience what was gonna happen. So in their first ad, they were saying, we're, we're, going to, we're going to show you this clip. At the end of the clip, it's somebody driving away from police, being chased. Um, and it's, you know, uh, it gives you two options at the end of the ad. You know, which one do you want to see tomorrow night? So you actually tweet in the, um, your decision of which way you wanted to go. People who didn't see the ad actually came onto Twitter. They were actually sitting in front of their TV waiting for the ad to show the following night. So this is where they're actually waiting for the ad. Um, so have, uh, keep an eye out for that particular example. Okay, so, so that's the presentation on Twitter brings you closer. Um, I, I hope that I brought Twitter a little bit closer to, to you guys uh, tonight, uh, and uh, I'd like to open up for any questions. <laughs>